So things are taking a turn in the UK property market, which could be the start of things to come as we go through 2023. And I've got all the latest data from Zoopla, Nationwide and Rightmove to go through. So let's dive right in and really try and get a grip on what's happening out there. It might not be the best time to be a seller or a buyer out there at this rate. So let's see if it's worth holding on for dear life or finally making that move. Anyway, here's your headline data. According to Nationwide, we've just seen the fourth consecutive monthly decline in house prices in the UK after seeing a negative 0.1% in the latest data here from December. So this now puts the average UK house price around £262,068. Now on its own, that doesn't really tell us much because there's so many other factors at play here. But just for some perspective, that's now the worst run since 2008 and we all know what happened around that time. Still though, I'm not here to try and do the whole doom and gloom headlines. Prices still remain up year over year and that's important to point out. As you can see on this chart from Zoopla, what this shows us is that even with these four months in a row of declines, house prices remain up this time last year by 7.2%. However, as you can see, we're now seeing a possible trend starting to happen where we're now heading downwards. These grey marks, which you can just about make out, are the month on month changes. And these are just about to head into the negative territory, wiping out those gains from the final part of 2022. In fact, let me quote you what they say in their monthly house report. They say that we expect to register quarterly price falls in the first half of 2023, dragging the annual growth rate into negative territory by mid year. So according to them, the first part of this year is pretty much only down from here. And here's maybe what it could look like if my drawing skills are working once I edit this video. I mean, how does that look? Pretty rubbish, but enough to get the picture. So what's the main factors driving this at the moment? And is there any light at the end of the tunnel? Well, if you've not been living under a rock for the past year, you'll know that this market is all about affordability. And especially when it comes to first time buyers who really want to get a piece of the market. With the current interest rates rising in the UK, which are now set at 3.5% from the good old Bank of England, this means that mortgage rates have increased a huge amount from just a couple of years ago. Goodbye 1.5 to 2% mortgages and hello new world where first time buyers, according to some of the best rates on the market, are looking at around 5% at the moment. You might remember that mortgage rates took a massive climb and many mortgage deals were pulled back from the market when Liz Truss and Quasi Quartang dropped their extremely well thought through budget. Rebelled. Anyway, we're still not out of the woods yet and I wouldn't bank on interest rates getting low anytime soon as the Bank of England is currently having to deal with the current levels of inflation, which are sat above 10% here in the UK. By raising interest rates, this puts pressure on the market as it's now more expensive to borrow money and take on debt, both as a consumer and as a business. So in theory, this reduces demand and causes prices to fall. Simple economics 101. However, as a lot of keen-eyed commenters often bring up, inflation hits people differently and it's very much the same in the property market too. Many of you share your own stories and please do keep them coming below that in your area and where you live, house prices have remained high or even increased when compared to those average stats. And that's definitely something to always be aware of. These average numbers are skewed, just like when we talk about average wages and anything like that. It's so different all around the country that we call home. So for example, Zoopla have this really interesting bit of data that shows how house prices have actually been skyrocketing in certain parts of the country, many not too far away from here in Manchester. So check this out on screen. All of these purple circles show us areas of the country outside of London, and the higher up they are shows us that they've increased in value over the last five years. Also, the further to the left they are shows us that they're lower value properties, which mostly sit below the average figure that we spoke about earlier. Now, there's plenty of areas here which have increased over the past five years by almost 50%, and sitting pretty here at the top is Oldham, which has seen a 47% rise in their house prices. The only caveat being that the average house price would be sitting around just the £150,000 mark, so well below the average house price of 260000 so clearly there's plenty of demand in certain parts of the market and then lower demand in others, especially in the high end of the data also shows. Now towards the far right and lower end of this chart, we're now looking at London and areas close to it. And while they're very expensive compared to the rest of the country, they've not seen the same double digit growth as other areas. As you can see, some of the really high priced areas right at the top of the market have actually lowered in value over the past few years. So could this be the end of the crazy London property market? Well, I'm not quite so sure, but definitely let me know your thoughts below in the comments. Anyway, Zoopla reckons that London house prices will see a 5 to 8% decline as they think that the lower house price areas of the market will actually be a lot more resilient and that definitely makes a lot more sense as first time buyers search for bargains and might get priced out of certain markets. One thing that's quite interesting in this report just on a slight tangent is buyer behaviour. Now after the lockdowns we had many people looking to get more space outside of the cities with detached houses and gardens but this now looks to have run out of steam apparently and they mentioned that there's now less interest in these coastal towns and rural areas that had suddenly rocketed up before. Now getting back on track, I think there's one thing that doesn't get spoken about when it comes to property prices and that's real values when we take inflation into account. You see, it's all good saying property prices went up 5 or 7% this year but unless you know what that's in relation to, 
and you can't really get a good understanding of what's going on. It's exactly the same as all the investing topics that I speak about on my channel. If you make 5% in an investment in stocks, but inflation runs at 10%, then you've actually lost 5% of buying power. Now, as we know, inflation's been running out of control as we mentioned earlier. So why don't we take a look at data on house prices that factors in inflation to see what those real numbers actually look like. Here's some of the best data I could find that makes sense, but do bear in mind that inflation is such a deep topic because the data published is weighted. And I know a lot of you will laugh when we talk about 10% inflation when your energy bills have gone up 50% and we're only just seeing fuel prices come down to a somewhat sensible level. But anyway, let's just tackle this one now to make a quick point first. Now, what we're looking at is real house prices. So that's once we factor in inflation, what's the real value of our property in terms of its buying power? Now, as you can see, there is definitely a trend upwards and that's outlined by this red line. However, in certain timescales and especially recently, you might find that your house hasn't really increased in real value at all. So let's look here, for example, if you bought your house around 2004, 2005 or 2006, this data suggests that the real value of the average UK house is actually no further ahead and is actually a bit lower. And then even more in recent times, let's say you bought a house in 2016 or 2017, Again, your returns in real values have been pretty flat. I know if we did the same exercise in the US that some of these examples just keep popping up time and time again. Just be careful assuming that property is a guaranteed asset to make money. It might do in the long run, but these shorter timescales, just like in the stock market, need to be taken into account. Now, just touching on inflation again, I know I just mentioned that the data we see seems to not really exist in the real world. So let me show you another source that I like to use, which is a platform called Trueflation, where they use what they claim to be a more fairer method when it comes to measuring things. If we look at their data dashboard for the UK, we'll see a pretty horrible picture, to be honest. It reckons that the UK, we're really looking at more like a 20% rise in inflation year over year at the moment, and it's been a rise up pretty much for the whole year. And just for some perspective, if we look also at US data, they're sat at 5.7% and their trend line's going down. The UK government needs to sort this out because this is not a global issue, clearly, but we won't go down the politics rabbit hole on this channel, otherwise we'd be falling asleep in two minutes. Anyway, back to some of the other data. Rightmove pretty much echo the same sentiment as you can imagine, but they do have some nice looking graphs worth sharing. Here's one on asking prices showing that for November and December, things were finally looking to turn negative, which could be a start of an interesting trend downward. Again, I'll have to revisit all of this data next month because I'm gonna be really intrigued to say where this one goes. And on that note, if you are enjoying the video, please do drop me a like, subscribe to and comment below, letting me know if you wanna keep this going regularly. It really does help out small UK channels like mine to get more people, and that way you don't have to only watch the Americans who shout at the camera really, really loudly. We love you, really. Anyway, another chart that looks quite interesting is this one that shows that it's taking slightly longer to find a buyer. It's clearly trending upwards, meaning that it's now taking longer and longer to get those same houses moving that used to flow off the shelves. Again, I can't wait for the latest data to come out so we can see if this trend continues. And this leads me on to another point I wanted to make that gets brought up in these reports. Now, obviously none of us know the future and making any kind of claims is almost pointless. But what is worth saying is that if we all expect a housing slump, then we're all down about the market and it might be a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy in exactly the same way as the stock market works. Houses and property are such an emotive topic, aren't they? And we all think that our house is special and it should be worth a certain amount, but really that's up to the market to determine at any given time. And if many people don't want to move or are happy where they are, then that also has a big effect on the market. Also, if I'm a first time buyer in this market, I also might think, well, hang on, let's just wait a few more months because things are trending downwards. And then if the supply stays the same, well, funny enough, this would then cause the price to drop further. But then the usual caveat applies. It all depends on the area, doesn't it? Also, although we're seeing these house prices fall month over month, even if we see more drops, we still might see prices above where they were just 12 months ago. And they could actually end up flat. And actually, the reports do highlight that finances of buyers remains pretty strong. So I really don't think that this is going to be anything like the great financial crash. I'll quote you here on what Nationwide reckons when it comes to the health of mortgage owners. They say that household balance sheets remain in good shape with significant protection from higher borrowing costs, at least for a period with about 85% of mortgage balances on fixed interest rates. Affordability testing has been central to mortgage lending since the financial crisis and typically stress tested at an interest rate above those prevailing at the moment. This means that while it will be difficult, the vast majority of those refinancing should be able to cope. Interesting, isn't it? Such a complex topic and so many moving parts, and we all have a unique experience of it depending on where we live. Now, for what it's worth, I think we can see a fall this year in house prices, but like the reports and the data that we've got here, I think the fall will be relatively small, and I think that at least on average, maybe it's around the 5-7% to mark. But double digit falls, I really do think are out of the question, unless of course we're talking about smaller parts of the market, like those who've got those multi-million pound flats and mansions, which is a much smaller section of buyers. Although who knows in that market, with a weak pound, those big properties in London and big cities start to look more attractive to overseas buyers too, and they don't even need a mortgage. 
Speaking from my own area, I'm just a couple of miles outside the city centre here in Manchester, and the skyline's completely changed over the past 10 years that I've been here. So many blocks of flats and office blocks, it feels like they can't keep up with the demand. And as much as we all thought it was remote work moving forward forever, I have to say that it's never felt so vibrant and bustling when I do venture into town. So maybe the shift is on again, moving from rural to urban, but let's wait and see what we get some more data from what's happening on the ground. As I've said, keep your comments coming. What's your local area like? Are you renting or buying? And what do you think of the property market generally this year? I'd love to see what you think. Anyway, if you do want to see my previous update video, which got over 100,000 views, here it is on screen now. Otherwise, enjoy this next video. Leave a like on the way out, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy investing.